As soon as Zika became a, an international public health crisis as declared by the WHO, we were very interested in it. Because we haven't modeled a lot of vector-borne diseases, it seemed like the right opportunity to extend our technologies to address that. So we're usually on the forefront of uh, emerging infectious diseases, and of course Zika is the most significant newly emerging disease in the last few years. Uh, Zika is traditionally not very dangerous to adults, but it can cause severe morbidity for children if the mother is infected during the pregnancy. For Zika, we have considerable issues with data quality, so the case data is hard to find. The spatial data is even more difficult to find because half of the Amazon rainforest is not very well charted, and population densities are so low it's hard to predict where people really are. Uh, rivers are the primary source of transportation for some people, and that makes it very hard for us to predict the movements of people within these communities. In current simulations and models of uh, vector-borne disease, there's a gap where human mobility isn't very well represented, and that's really our sort of bread and butter. We do a very good job of estimating human mobility. And so while mosquitoes can be infected from people, it's the people that actually move it around into the mosquitoes who then infect other people. Essentially what we're doing is we're trying to look at the little bits of information we have and figure out all the rest. Uh, things that will affect the model, for example, the time after you're exposed to disease before you're able to transmit to others, uh, those things you can try to discern from some of the equations. And they're nice to have for the modeling, but for the actual people on the ground in the field, knowing the infectious windows can mean everything. So open data can certainly benefit the science by allowing collaboration across multiple labs to solve problems more quickly. I think it actually benefits the people on the ground more because cooperation will foster a much better response than if individual labs tried to work on the problem on their own. And in the end, the people who are affected by the disease are going to benefit the most from that. Open data is extremely important in less developed countries because there aren't existing maps of people or road networks or communities. And if that wasn't released by the people that create them in real time, we would never have any data at all. Collaboration is a crucial part to this process. Uh, essentially, there's so many specific disciplines required to do this well that one mind is not going to contain them all. You know, we need the GIS guys. We need the guys on the ground who understand how things can actually work. So everyone benefits from data sharing, whether you're from the country that's affected, whether you're a researcher or a member of the public. By sh working with data that's freely available, you're able to answer some kind of research question. And in the case of Zika, this could help curtail the outbreak. The main reason for the open data movement now is for data to be open so people can reproduce research, so we actually make the correct policy decision. So reproducibility is extremely important in science because you're able to reproduce an actual experiment, and this moves from research being anecdotal to being concrete and objective.